that's just a sound check. You know, just want to be sure it is nothing but the best for you guys today. <laughs> serious topic that we're going to discuss. It's important to set the mood for it. Exactly. So our goal here is to let you know what to do. And we want to talk about emergencies and disasters. Okay? What's the difference? Okay, with an emergency, you could say, yes, we have a, uh, a response, right? We have a sudden, urgent need uh, for an event that has to be dealt with. And you're going to call police, you're going to call fire, EMS, you're going to get that response. Okay, agree? I take that that you're still awake, I hope? Yes. yes. Okay, so, but then if you decide to have beans at lunch today, that may put some people up into an emergency <laughs> category, all right? So if that's our baseline for an emergency, then how do we define our baseline for a disaster? Okay? You still have a fire, police, EMS type of response, right? But they're going to require additional resources to get the job done, right? By definition, a disaster is something that overwhelms your capability to effectively manage it, all right? And if you're a little extra hungry, and you have two servings of beans at lunch, uh, for some people that could put them from an emergency level up to a disaster level. Okay. Good news is I don't think that we're having beans at lunch today. Okay. So my question for you now is that disasters happen, right? Yeah, you know, uh, they do. And look, this goes both ways. That's as far as I'll say it, okay? So, bad things happen. Can they be avoided? <laughs> well, some disasters can be, all right? If you're not a big Nicolas Cage fan and you didn't really want to see him as Superman, then we can say, thankfully, that disaster was avoided, okay? This was as far as Tim Burton got making that movie. Okay? But in reality, the best way to avoid a disaster is not to be there when it occurs. Right? If it does occur, are there some things then that you can do to help lessen the effects of that disaster? You betcha. We call those efforts mitigation. Okay? How many of you drove in today? Right. Everybody did. Did you guys wear seatbelts? Sure. Does your car have airbags? <clears throat> Those are efforts, those are actions taken to help mitigate the effects if you happen to be into, in a collision, right? Not an accident, because an accident implies fault, right? Collision. going to go quite that way, is it? No. <laughs> so, you guys heard of Sperling's Best Places? Okay, website used to be a magazine. A few years back, they looked at the metro areas across the country to determine the best and the worst places to live based solely upon our weather and earthquake risk. So here in North Central Texas and in our metro area, where do you think we came out? As the best place to live? No. You're right. We came out as the worst place to live, the worst metro area, just based upon our severe weather risk and earthquake risk. And at that time, when this came out, we weren't having earthquakes here in North Central Texas. So this is about five, six years ago. So 
have we experienced an increase of earthquakes here in our region? Right. So what does that tell us then just based upon our natural and our severe weather risk five years ago? That those risks are so high, even with a very, very non-existent earthquake risk, we still came out as the worst metro area to live in the country. All right? So what should you do? Now, calculate the speed of training and the speed of our horses. We meet at this vector. The only variable is the wind. Technically, if you travel over here on the horses, is this strength? <laughs> All right, we're just going to wing it. <sighs> we're just going to wing it. Okay? Look. He took the time to make a plan, right? Thought about it, took out his crayons, did his little diagram, spent a lot of time and effort on it. But then he waited till the very last minute to try to implement it, to try to get his followers, his co-workers, to agree to his plan. No success there, right? He gets frustrated. He ends up then, we're just going to wing it. All right? Well, we don't want you to wing it. Okay? So how do we get you to know what to do? We're going to follow a very simple philosophy. Okay? Scientifically proven over and over again. We refer to this as our Holy Trinity, okay? To think, to prepare, and then to take action, okay? We shorten it to act because it sounds better. Think, prepare, act, all right? So how do we get you to do this? One step at a time, right? First one is to do what? What do we need to think about Maybe what our hazards are, what do we face, okay? We can group these into these categories here. And this could be a very exhaustive list, no matter where you live, okay? So we'll run through a couple of these. And if you are still awake, if you want to participate, this is the portion of where I will ask a question. And the, I would anticipate there might be some type of response, okay? And at this time, you may be thinking, I hope he doesn't look at me when he asks that question because then I'm going to feel under pressure to respond. Okay? I just might. So, what's our number one killer as it relates to a natural hazard here in north central Texas? Anybody? Floods. Tornado, floods, right? It is, in fact, flooded, okay? This hazard drives me crazy, okay? Because this is something, we have a national program, national educational program, and it really does not give us the results of what we want, right? You guys have heard, turn around, don't drown? And this is still our number one threat from natural hazards, okay? Six inches of moving water is strong enough to knock you off your feet. Twelve inches of moving water is enough to move your car. Okay? People in this region die every year in flooding events. Okay? And it just, it, it just drives me crazy. Alright? It doesn't take much to put you into a situation where it's going to cost your life. Alright? Don't drive through it. Find another way around. Okay? What about thunderstorms? How many thunderstorms do you think we average uh, here in this region? Okay? For some of you to notice, I gave Justin uh, a prize. If you have prize envy, now's the time that you can participate and try to get one yourself. 
Okay? So, I will ask again, how many severe thunderstorms do you think? How many thunderstorms do we average in this region? A lot. A lot. Okay, that's, that, that's very specific. Okay, so, does anybody else want to hazard a guess? 400. It's more than one a day. What? That's more than one a day, though. Right. Right. So you're saying no. No, I'm saying 100. You're saying 100. Okay. Anybody else want to jump in on the prize envy selection of this 500. question? 500. I have a lot. 400, 500, and 100. Anybody else going once? One dollar. <laughs> it is, in fact, about 209. Okay, so, and that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Particularly where we go through these droughts here. Now, that is an average, okay? But still, 209. Uh, that's a great picture, uh, unless you're kind of standing right there, right? Um, but yes, we do have those houses because that leads to what? What was our number one killer? Honey, absolutely. Okay? How about lightning? How far away can lightning be, as a general rule, and still pose a threat to your life? Ten miles. I have ten miles. Anybody else? No one else. Anticipation level is dropping. So, by default, you actually get one there. It is, a, it is, in fact, the general rule is twenty miles. Okay? So, but you know how to determine it. If you don't have an app that's telling you how close it is, if you don't have a lightning meter, do you know what the general old school rule of thumb is to determine roughly about how far away the lightning is? Mile for every second. Mile for every second. Okay. You know, I'm glad someone didn't, you know, put it out this way, but, uh, you know, when I was a kid, uh, you were told to, um, you know, you wait for... Uh, you know, you get the flash, and then, then you get the you get the sound, and uh, and then you do a uh, Mississippi count. Okay. Well, I think we don't need to poke fun at people from Mississippi because that's not their fault. They didn't come up with that rule, right? So, what's the what is the rule now? What is generally considered? Just do a regular count. Just do a regular count, and then you divide by five. Okay. I'm not real good at math, so I'm going to use this as an example. If I count to 10, and I divide by 5, I end up with 2. So that lightning strike then was 2 miles away from it. Okay. Do you want to be outside if you have something like this occurring? No. No. No, absolutely not. How many tornadoes do we average in our region? This is a trick question, but I'm going to let you go with it anyway. All right? In our region. Our region is 16 counties as defined by the North Central Texas Council of Governments. You know, it's kind of long and skinny, but it's 16. Okay? It's got 100. 64. 43. 43. 80. How many? 80. 8. 80. 80? 80. 80. Okay. 26. All right. Okay, so this number is a little misleading because at the time these statistics were done, Scott, there you go. at the time that, that this study was done, we were only averaging 12. Okay? Now, we've had an increase of tornadoes within the last five years. Okay? That number is going to be higher now. But... If I'm using the statistics for the other slides, I got to stay with that one from, you know, five years ago as well. All right. So this is Tuscaloosa. This was uh, right before A&M joined uh, the SEC conference and, you know, came to Tuscaloosa and beat them. So that was not when A&M came to town. That was shortly before. All right. Intentional hazards. Okay. This gets a lot of... Uh, uh, notoriety in the media, right? We deal a lot of this with our faculty members and our, and our staff folks here. Acts of terrorism, active shooters. You know, it used to be this was only talked about in one place, right? Where? Right 
well, post office, right? Remember? Okay. It's way beyond that. It, you know, and then it was workplace violence. Okay. It's, it's way beyond workplace violence. Okay. It's in airports. It's at baggage claim areas, right? It's at restaurants. It is at movie theaters. And yes, it's at schools. Okay. It's a very big hazard for us to have to deal with. Well, what about biological hazards? Okay. This is something that we spend a little bit of time talking to our staff members about because our college is a partner with our county health department that we will stand up if we have a pandemic uh, situation here in the county, we'll stand up one of our campuses and be a point of distribution to the citizens of this county. Part of that MOU is that we can ask our, um, our employees to assist in that process. And if they assist in it, then they get head of the line privileges for the medication or the vaccinations then that's being disseminated out to the citizens of this county. Okay. It's a win-win situation. The county needs multiple areas to be able to get the medication or vaccinations out to the population. We have five campus locations throughout our county, okay? Four of which are ideally suited to be able to get a large number of people in and out, okay? This was a win-win situation for us, okay? Have you folks been dealing with other things that could fall into here? We had, what, we had swine flu a couple years ago, right? Uh, we had a measles outbreak, right, at uh, the happiest place on earth. Right? Zika virus, West Nile virus keeps coming back. You know, with all due respect to Mr. Buffett, how do you not know where to go when the is going to act up, right? Are you that far in your island life that you just don't care? I don't know. I live in North Central Texas. I think I would care, you know. But, um, you know, folks, we just ran through a very short list of some of the hazards and that we can face living and working here in North Central Texas. But then what can you do? We identified some of those things. So what is it then that you can do to prepare yourself for this? Okay. We're back to where we don't want you to wing it. We want you to have a plan. Okay, and this is what we talk about to our faculty, our staff members, and even our students. Okay? Pick a place to meet. If you're here at work and we have to evacuate, we have to go somewhere, where are we going to meet up? Okay? Do we have people that we're responsible for? Do we know that we have a coworker or someone down the hall that is disabled? Okay? Are we looking out for them as well? All right? This is also information you can take home with you. All right? My family, does, we do not have extended family here in Texas, okay? So it's important that our family members that are on the East Coast and then way up north of us, that they have contact information for our friends in case they can't get a hold of us directly, all right? Have you thought about that? I can't be the only one that was kidnapped by marriage and forced to move here, okay? I'm just saying. How about the last one? Build an emergency kit. How many of you have an emergency kit? Don't raise your hand, Chris. I knew you were going to raise your hand. Okay. All right. So some of you do. That's great. Does it look somewhat like this, right? A really gigantic ice cooler chest. Okay. I know all those things will not fit into the little cooler. Just kind of go with it. All right. Illustration. What's the most important thing you want to put in your preparedness kit? Food and water, right? Water, specifically, do you know what the guideline is? One gallon of water per person per day. Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to use my fast, highly trained math skills. I have a family of four. I'm going to need 12 gallons. Okay. How much food? You want to say three days worth per person, right? But 
you know, it's a little bit harder to put a quantity on food, all right? I have a 15-year-old daughter who eats like a bird, okay? So, I have a 19-year-old son who eats like a horse, uh, you know, so whatever I put in there, I got to be sure it's going to kind of balance out, right? Um, this also has up here uh, to put some cash in there. You know, this hasn't come up in my house, but this is how I think. So uh, I don't tell my kids that there's money in there, okay? Because uh, they're teenagers, and if I say it's for emergencies, and one of them has a date or something, and they need some cash, I don't want them to say, well, that's an emergency, and I know where I can get some, all right? Also, in the bottom right, it says pet supplies. Uh, I'm an advocate that... Don't put your pet supplies in here with your with your family supplies, okay? And before you have to test the barricades I have in place here and take me out because you don't agree with that situation, I'm going to say, hold on a second. I want you to do one specifically for your pets, okay? Let's keep them separated, all right? So what do you want to put aside for your pets that's different from what you'd have for your family, okay? That's my wife's dog. That's Clyde. That's my wife's cat. That's Sally. Okay? I'm going to point out that Sally was a munchkin cat. Has those three inch legs, and my wife said, guaranteed, will not get on the counter. <laughs> <laughs> so, the reason why I have pictures of our dog and cat here is that our dog is a big, lovable lab, right? He's 68, 70 pounds. He's small for a lab, but you know he's an English lab. And he likes to walk on the left-hand side, but that's okay. But our cat, this mini munchkin, is maybe, maybe four pounds, if that. Okay. So, in our disaster kit, we just have a leash for Clyde, but for Sally, we actually have a little folding carrier. Okay, because she's going to need that. Clyde is not. All right, but yes, you do want to put their food and and put a separate water supply for your pets. Okay. Same thing then medical records, right? And yes, an ID tag and collar. My kids don't like to wear their ID tag and collar, but I make them. No, I don't. Okay, but pets do. The other thing I want to point out is if you do this, you set up a separate kit for your pets. And heaven forbid they don't make it through whatever the disaster situation is. You now have an additional supply of food and water. Okay? I won't tell anybody that you're on to dog food or cat food. That can just be our little secret. But if it gets us through the disaster, it gets us through the disaster. Right? <laughs> Who has ICE on their smartphones now? Okay. Takes two minutes to do it. Uh, it is advised that uh, you don't put, uh, you know, uh, pertinent information in there. You know, this example it has, you know, mom and, you know, my mom, but it doesn't say the name, right? Uh, don't, don't even put my mom. Just put a phone number listed in there. Okay, first responders are being taught to check. If you're unconscious, then check and see if they have somebody listed on their smart, smartphone or their device. Okay, and if they need to use it because it is an emergency situation for you, let the authorities figure out who it is that they're dealing with. Okay, the last thing you want to do is to have your bag, your backpack, or, uh, or your purse, or your purse. I carry a purse. Uh, stolen, and then they get, uh, they can scroll through the device and they see, you know, uh, husband or wife, and they send a text message because now they have your bank card and they go, hey, what's our ATM code I'm having a brain with? Okay. And they go, oh, sure, it's this. And then you get cleaned out for a couple hundred dollars. Okay. That is on an increase nationally. Okay. So we want to be helpful. But we don't want to be too helpful, okay? 
So my advice is just put the number in there, let the authorities figure it out, okay? Coming from a fireside, I used to sit there and say, well, you can just keep it as ICE because firefighters would understand. Police, you may want to spell out in case of emergency, but but again, I have barriers. Okay. So, for our folks here on campus, how do we get emergency information to you? All right. We have uh, message clocks. Okay. We have one in the back right now. Uh, most of the time, it's just time of day. Okay. It's district wide. We have eighteen hundred of these clocks. All right but we can put an emergency message over, all right? But we also have added an alert to Cisco uh, phone alert where we have about 5,000 of these Cisco phones across the district that are able to receive a tone, the handset lights up, and then you get the text message on the screen, okay? We are almost completely finished with our phase one installation of adding alert beacons throughout the district. Okay? Uh, when we are finished with phase one, we'll have about, I want to say, um, maybe a little bit over 300. Okay? And then we have another 100 more that's going to be in phase two. So we'll have about 400 alert beacons across our district by the time that we're done, all right? We also are uh, pushing to our community to download the Alertus app, okay? The big part about this is what we experience, we do get a lot of power outages, okay? So this is a big piece of that puzzle of being able to stay connected when our community is without power. All right. Um, we also have uh, the Alertus computer desktop alerts. Okay. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, uh, whatever you have up on your computer and you're doing your class or you're working or anything like that, well, then it just will <laughs> pop up. Okay. Our IT department refuses to put the Tarzan Yodel uh, audio bit in there for me. Uh, I think it would add a little bit more oomph to it, but they disagree. Uh, but uh, this is also when we talk about to our folks is the importance of, as we have, like I said, five major campuses, and we have about a total of about 10 or 12 other facilities, right, to expand our numbers. It's very important for our folks to read what's in the box, okay? Um, I normally do a world famous Brad Pitt imitation from the movie Seven about what's in the box, okay? But that's a little pressure on me today, so I think I'll skip that, okay? But it's very, very important. If you're here on the TCC campus, we wanna be sure then we always start the message with the campus and the building that we have the situation occurring in. Okay. Because we have had some instances where a computer thinks it's at one campus, but it's actually on another campus, and it fires off that alert. Okay. Um, IT trying to figure that out. I think maybe they just have toga parties on weekends, and they just don't make it back to where they should be. Okay. But according to state law, with our mass notification system. Our faculty, staff, and students are automatically enrolled to receive a voice and an email message, and we use RAVE, okay? We do then have to herd our staff, faculty, and students to add text messaging to their profile, okay? And I'm sure if you guys are like me, that that's easier said than done, right? So these are things then that we really try to drive home to our community the importance of updating your profile information, how much faster it is to get a text message versus an email, which we also know that uh, young people today do not read emails, right? And the voice message. Uh, my kids don't answer the phone. 
they have funds, but they never use it as a fund. So is it really a fund anymore? I don't know. <clears throat> Amen to that, and sad to see that Adam West passed away last week, right? But I love that clip, and that's a short clip, because I'm maybe some of you have seen that movie, right? Because you know then that that scene goes on for much longer, and he is turned away every time because he cannot safely get rid of that bomb, right? But what I love about that clip is he doesn't stop. He continues to try to find a solution, right? He's not afraid to go into action. So to recap what we've talked about here is we kind of identified what some of the hazards that we can face living and working here. Okay, What are some things that we can do to help be better prepared? But then now it's also a question of putting it into action. Okay, We talk a lot with our, with our community about if you don't Think about these things ahead of time. Then you're not going to know what to do when the time is actually on hand. And you will lose. Okay? So, there are things we want you to focus on. Okay? Not this slide, because it will hurt your eyes. Right? But what is it then that we tell our community here at TCC to focus on? We try to keep it simple. Alright? These four things. To evacuate, to seek shelter, to remain in the building, or to lock down. So, how do we hammer these things home? Okay? Regardless of what the situation is, if we give an order to evacuate, then we want you to evacuate. We don't want it to be based upon, well, there's a bomb threat or, oh no, it is a fire, there is a reason why we are sending a message for you to get out. So get out, okay? It's going to be short and it's going to be sweet, all right? So we talk about, we hit home, take your stuff with you, don't leave it behind, because someone else will take it then come behind you, all right? And you may have a reason to get out of the building, but there may be a reason where you don't get back in the building for quite some time, okay? So... Take your stuff with you, get out, all right? Uh, this slide is purely for representational purposes only. I must tell you, if in fact our building is on fire, we will move further away than what is depicted here. All right, come on, it took me five minutes to write that joke. Right? If you see this and you're not thinking coming right here, get back inside, right, if you're outside, okay? Rule of thumb, if you're new to this type of uh, situation here in this area, is what? You want to go up as high as you can or you want to get down as low? Low as possible, right? Interior room or hallway, stay away from doors and windows, okay? This is what we try to hammer home. It's a sick shelter. <laughs> It, this one poses a lot of issues for us, okay? We've tried to shelter in place, and what we found is that to shelter in place, our people were doing what? They were going to shelters, right? They are going to severe weather shelter areas. That's not what we want, okay? So, we decided on this course is that the message is going to be remain in the building. Don't go outside. Remain in the building. All right? It could be overturned container of ethyl methyl death and the wind could be blowing in the direction right in campus. And we know we want you to stay inside. Okay? It could be that there's a manhunt for an armed suspect. Okay? We've had this scenario. And it's outside of campus grounds. Don't go outside. Okay? It could be an overturned tractor trailer of migratory beekeepers. 
Okay? Texas is number one in the nation. Have you thought about that? Okay? These are issues why I don't get invited to parties. So at least that's what I tell myself. But there are reasons why we want them to stay inside. Okay? We don't want them to stop what they're doing. Just don't go outside until we tell you it's okay. Our lockdown philosophy is that we do follow the run, hide, and fight. Okay? I'm sure this is familiar to most of you, right? Run, hide, and fight. Right? We have a situation that does occur. That's not very pleasant. Okay? And if you need to get out, you have another means of egress from the situation, then that's what we want you to follow. Okay? Run fast as you can and keep going. All right? That's great if you have another way out. Okay? So what happens if you don't have another way out? Okay? Well, now we're into our hide, right? We can't get out safely, so we're going to stay where we are. Turn off our lights. Turn them off. Be quiet. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to wait. Okay? We're going to wait for our police to be able to take care of the situation, and hopefully that's the end of it. All right? Silence our cell phones, and we're going to be quiet. All right? If that doesn't work, then what are we left with? Well, you guys are pretty smart. You could figure it out. If our philosophy was run, hide, and fight, and I just walk through how we run and then how we hide, the next one's going to be, we're going to have to fight. If that's what it comes to, that's what it's going to come to. Take it easy. Okay? Look, it's PowerPoint animation, okay? There's only so much I can do, but I couldn't show one finger totally wipe out those other fingers, right? You notice that they ran off the screen, right? So, but the threat was still real. You faced with the situation, it's either you or them, okay? And so we try to hammer the stuff home to our folks. The importance of our faculty members to talk to their students at the beginning of every, of every semester. Talk it through. Be sure that they're aware of it, okay? Because if you don't, it's too late when it does occur, okay? You saw the video of the uh, Miami baggage claim shooting, right? Did you, did you guys see that? When the guy took, took out his weapon and he started shooting, the couple that was right behind him, okay? The, the elderly man turned around and ducked right behind the little cart return thing, and his wife just stood right there in front and just completely froze. And he gets up and he gets her. And he brings her back and then puts her down, right? So that really is what's going to happen to most people. They're not going to be able to process the event that's occurring. They're not going to know what to do. All right? This is why it's important for us to talk this through with our folks. All right? We force them. We force them through this type of training. We're horrible people. Okay? Because we don't want you to fool yourself. All right? We can look across the country, we look across the world, we can see that these things happen, and we don't want you in a situation like this. And then you're stuck because you don't know what to do. Okay? So let me, uh, let me wrap up with uh, our summary here, right? Think about the hazards of where you live, where you work, even where you travel. Okay, anybody going off on vacation this summer? I'm the only one? Oh, we got a couple. Okay. All right. So do you look and see what uh, is over there, where you're going, what's in store? You know? Uh, I do because I have to answer my parents. Are you sure you want to go out of the country? Are you sure? Okay. Do you know what kind of bad stuff they have over there? Yes, that's what they have. Okay. 
sunburn. Prepare yourself and your family. Don't be afraid to go into action when the time is on hand. Okay? It's very simple, but it's a proven philosophy. Think, prepare, and act. All right? So you suffered enough, I'm going to just end it with a quick test. All right? It's really tough, so if you guys are ready, you guys ready for it? Yep. All right. Who is the only performer elected to the follow? Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Country Music Hall of Fame, Gospel Music Hall of Fame, and the Martial Arts Hall of Fame. Did someone say something? Elvis. Did you say it? Elvis. Elvis. Raise your hand, whoever said it first. He works for he works for us, it doesn't count. Alright. Who's the second person that said Elvis, right? In the back? It is, in fact, Elvis. There you go. You get the big one. So, folks, I do appreciate the fact that you all stayed awake. All I have to say is that is essentially it for me. But thanks for coming.